I guess. I have a small task to introduce to you, and that is the chess piece challenge. So in this one, I'm going to give you a PDF with some instructions for this as well, this one here. And I'm just gonna give you a brief rundown in a video of what you are going to do. So in the front view, you're going to draw a vertical line, which is gonna be roughly the height of your chess piece. So about 60 mil. So when you start drawing it, you can type in zero, so it starts at the origin, and then draw it up, and you'll notice in this section down here, it's giving you a readout of how tall that line is. So make it about 60 mil. And then once you've got there, just left click. Right click or enter will finish the command, so you can finish the command. And now you're going to draw a bunch of overlapping shapes. It doesn't really matter what um, shape or form, it's this is going to become half of the profile for the chess piece. So if you wanted it to have a square base or so on, just draw yourself a larger rectangle and then fill it up with some circles or other pieces. And you're just going to get these to roughly overlap with each other. And if you wanted to do inverted shapes or instead of just bulbous shapes, bulging outwards, you could draw this circle or an ellipse so that you're thinking about this edge here and using that. You could draw some ellipses. So if you wanted to have, if you were thinking about making a piece like a bishop, you could draw one, something like that. And then you can either move it around using the gumball. So if your gumball is not visible, you can turn that on down here. You can scale it and move it around. So this one will move it in the green or in the red direction. This one over here will allow you to move anywhere on that plane. So in this case, because we're in the front view, Z and X. And likewise, this one will allow you to scale it kind of faster and quickly without having to go into any command to do that. So you can just scale it down by grabbing these little widgets here. Um, if you want to just draw some lines, that's fine as well. So if you have a kind of a profile in mind, you can just draw yourself some freeform lines. So if you want to do something like that. Once you've drawn it, select them all, and then use the trim command to trim away the excess from the outside. So for example, here, and we're thinking about this kind of scoop inside of here. So get rid of that, be here, and get rid of that one. And I'm just gonna leave that for a second. I'm just gonna have a little think about which way I'd prefer it. Probably this way. And then this one from the top. And then all of the excess from the other side. Now, sometimes if you're very, like if you're giving Rhino confusing signals about what you're thinking about, if you click sometimes on a line which is very close together, it will pop up a little menu, curve and curve, and ask you, which one do you mean? And you can flick through those and select those. So we'll get rid of this section here. And you can quickly select a bunch of lines. Anything that's inside of the marquee when you drag it left to right will get selected and anything right to left, anything it touches will get selected. So you can use this quickly to trim away a bunch of objects. Now if you wanted to do a chamfer or a faceted edge on this, Again, just draw yourself another line. You can use the object snaps. So down here with O snap on, you can choose to get to the end of objects or the midpoint. So we use that and then trim away the excess here. And then once you've done that, you're gonna select all of these and join them together. So select all of them and join those together. Now, the command that you're gonna use next is your first steps into 3D. So over here, I've kind of made some extra models of examples of what you can do to this. So we'll just do the revolve first, which will give you a form like this. So pick it up, surface, revolve. And the first thing it's gonna ask you is the start of the revolve axis. And this is important for you to have your kind of, your four viewports visible to you and making sure that orthographic is on so that you can snap from here to the end point here or vertically anywhere along that as long as orthographic is on. And the next thing that Rhino is asking you to 
input is where does it start? So it starts at zero and it revolves a full 360 degrees. So once those are in bold, that's selected. If you're on a Mac, you might have to type in zero and 360. And then this is the form that you're going to get. Okay. And that base is, is pretty massive on it, but it's okay for um, the kind of start objects that we're going to do. You, if your viewport is not unshaded, you can just right click on the viewport name or this little drop down uh, chevron and just choose shaded. If you want to have a look at what this might look like if this was made in some material, you can turn it on rendered. It depends on how good your graphics card and your processor is in your computer, how fast it's going to kind of compute the shadows for this. But shaded is, uh, is a really good way of looking at your objects quick as you can see where the planes and surfaces exist. Once you've drawn one profile, you can just take that and move it over to one side. And then other things that you could think about, you know, this area is quite plain here. Maybe you want to do some scoops out of it or kind of indents into it. And you could quite easily go back in and use a rectangle and just draw in a couple of cutouts for that. So if we leave maybe tree mill at the top, you can copy items using the gumball. So you just hold down the Alt or Option key and then click and drag. So before you start to drag it, you hold down the Alt or Option key and then move it using the gumball. And this will allow you to make a couple of extra copies. So we could use that, select all of those, use Trim. Again, you can individually go in and click in these, but somewhere like this where you've got a whole bunch of them, you can hold down the left mouse button and drag right to left and get all of those trimmed away in one go. And I'm thinking about making this into an indent into it. You could do the opposite and take those and add them towards the outside as well. I'm kind of lucky making these into little fins that are um, taken away from the surface. So I'll do that. Press enter to finish the command and then join up all these new lines that we've made. Okay. And then again, you're going to use the revolve command. So select your curve and moving around in 3D and your different viewports, just use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then you can select this. So pick it up, surface, revolve, pick it up from the endpoint here to the endpoint here, or in the front viewport, pick it up from the endpoint and move it directly up. It's asking you for the start angle, so it's zero, and it revolves 360. And now you'll have this kind of fin-like form on the top of it. And if you were making something, say, like a bishop piece, you could do cutouts from this, and I'm just gonna show you how to do those. But before I do that, I'm just gonna mention, you don't always have to go 360 degrees. So if you were getting this um, 3D printed, um, or you just wanted to make a small mold for it, you could start at zero, so zero, and then do something like 180 degrees. So you make half of the object. Now it's not going to close it by default, okay? You have some options to uh, fix that and close it off. So you could just pick up the poly surface and then go up to solid and cap a planar hole, and that will make a cap for this. So this is something that you could 3D print lying down like that and then glue two halves together or stick two halves together. Or if you were thinking of making this as a component onto a frame or a similar object as well. Okay, so if you want to make a piece where it's scooped and cut out of it like this, just do the revolution to 360 degrees. So from here, we'll try that once more. So. So from here and then somewhere up here, zero. And then it remembers always your last setting. So if it, the results are not turning out the way you expect, it might be that you've changed the input numbers. So we'll turn this back to 360. And then we're going to draw a little rectangle maybe to cut out the top of this. So to draw a rectangle and then take that and you can use the gumball widget to rotate it around. So I'll just grab it and because orthographic is on, it's always wanted going to snap to zero and 90 degrees. So if you only want to 
rotate it partly, you can hold down the shift key while you're doing that. And that will toggle off orthographic for while you're doing that. Okay, so if you hold down the shift key, you can snap it to whatever angle you are looking for. Now I'm just gonna use the gumball widget and move that over so it intersects this top part of the chess piece. So we've got this. This is 2D and this is 3D. So we need to make this maybe a little bit longer so that it makes our life easier for trimming this out. So to do that, we're going to extrude it. So surface, extrude planar curve, and you need to make sure that you're in the surface menu for this and that you're extruding a planar curve straight. And then because we put this in the middle of our object, it'll be easiest to have both sides check to yes, so that you're not just extruding to one side. So both sides yes. And then the only thing you're looking for is to make sure that that extends beyond the object that we've done. And now once you've got that, you're going to trim these up against each other. So you can see here it's extruding and extending, the extrusion is extending through the object here and the top viewport. And you can also move around it in perspective and have a look at it and see, and just make sure. So you've trimmed curves. Now you're going to get introduced to trimming surfaces. So trim, select the coding objects. You can select the two and you can trim them off each other. Press enter and then select the bit that you want to extrude, um, trim away from the extrusion, so the extremity, and then zoom in and make sure you're looking at where this trench is going to be, and then select that, right click to finish, and that will give you these two new parts. And then select those two and choose join, and it will tell you that it's joined into one closed poly surface. So you can have a single curve, poly curves, a surface, and then poly surfaces, and then you can join those all together. And then other things that you might consider doing would be a Boolean union or a difference. So if you were looking to make beading details or so on, um, or other objects that are kind of cut away and scooped away from this, you don't always have to use the trim command. You can use the Boolean commands. And you might remember these from um, maths class in secondary school where they were talking about um, Boolean command, Boolean union, and difference. So I'm just going to move this over here. And what I've done is I've drawn a couple of spheres. So you can draw any of the 3D shapes under here, so under the solid menu. And if you're looking for a sphere, it's just this one. And it's asking you, first of all, where's the center? So you could draw the center of it and then the first radius, which defines how large or small that is. And once you've drawn a few of those at different sizes, you can use the gumball widget and then using either the top view or a combination of views to kind of get these into position. So you might not want to scoop it right out of the bottom like that. You might want to move it up and cut it out of the side, so on. So you're kind of lining it up in a few different viewports so you can see what's happening. And then once you've got those, you're going to use this command over here, the Boolean command. And I'm just going to bring that out so you can see it. So the first one is a union. The second one is a difference. And the third one is the intersection. And we're just going to use the first two today to kind of get you introduced to this. So the difference, select the surfaces or poly surfaces that you want to subtract from. So we want to subtract from our chess piece. Press enter and then select the pieces that you want to cut away from that. And then we'll just take all of these spheres that we've drawn and then press enter. And now these have been cut away from that surface. Okay. And likewise, you could have decided, you know, maybe I didn't want to subtract them from it. I wanted to add them to it. So I'm gonna show you a very quick way of doing that. So I'm just gonna move these over again. And here I've taken the small sphere and I've just moved it up to the top. And I'm gonna show you how to make a simple array. So if you want to make a, a bunch of these um, spheres, so I'm just gonna draw a sphere. I'm just gonna draw it on the top here and a very small one like this. And then using the gumball and my different viewport, 
I can move this around and get it lined up the way I want. So maybe I'm thinking about doing a very small detail around this kind of neck of the bishop. So just move these around and then we're in position. So in this one, I'm going to make three on it and this one I'm going to make a whole bunch around it. So I'll take this transform array polar and it's going to ask you for the center of this now if you've drawn your object centered on zero then you can just type in zero and if you haven't and you've moved it like i have here you're always looking for a reference point from your model so in this case you could use the very top from this it's going to ask you how many items do you want to make in this case we'll make three and then it's going to go a full 360 and press enter and then it's going to give you a little preview a little diagram in wireframe as to roughly where they are and then press enter now for this one we're going to do a very similar task so transform array polar pick the center at the top and this time i might choose 12. it's going to ask me do i want to go full 360 i do and then the preview and then enter and now I can add these onto the form. So rather than subtracting and taking them away, I can add those again using the solid tool menu here. And if you want these to persist, so stay out on your screen, hold down on it and then click on the menu bar at the top. And then it will change from just a little fly up menu like this into a persistent menu where it tells you the name for those tools and union so we're going to add these together so pick this one one two three and then again you can pick all of these and press enter and now these are all unified on it so you can have a look inside the object or go into wireframe and then you can see that all the excess material from those spheres that was extending inside is all gone and turn back and shade it Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to design a couple of uh, chess pieces with that in mind.